welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young and today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this really pretty winter scene. So I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly how to paint this from start to finish. We're going to begin with a background and then work up to the mountains and these snow covered trees and then finally this beautiful little cabin nestled in the woods. So I'm going to quickly run through the brushes and all the paints that we're using today, all the colors that you're going to need. And I'm using a 9 by 12 double primed stretch canvas today, but you can use any size canvas that you like for this. So here are all the brushes really quickly we'll go through. And if you don't catch this part, it's all going to be listed below in the description. You're going to need one large blending brush, a mini filbert brush. I don't know if you guys can see this. And this is for painting the trees. And you're also gonna need a large flat brush. And one liner brush of your choice. You can use a smaller one, doesn't matter, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Um, and, okay, so here are all the colors we're gonna need. I've got titanium white, but any white that you have will work just fine. Then for the sky, we're gonna be using phthalo blue and a light purple violet, but if you have magenta or quinacridone violet, that will work just great. And Or any purple. If you don't have those ones, you can use any purple you like. That will work fine too. And then for my bright warm colors for the highlights and the glow inside that cabin, I've got neon orange and neon yellow. Now again, if you don't have the specific colors here, you can use any yellow or orange that you like. Okay, so guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe, like this video, and let's get started. Okay, we're gonna begin on this nine by 12 stretched canvas using phthalo blue and a light purple violet. We'll need our large flat brush, and I'm gonna get it a little bit wet first and then pull into both colors, mixing well and loading my brush. I'm gonna begin applying the paint across the top and the bottom where I want the color to be the darkest. Okay, let's take some more paint and do the same thing right on the bottom. So back and forth, nice long strokes with your brush, pushing and pulling that paint. Now careful not to paint over the entire canvas. We want to leave the middle portion uh, blank so that we can add some white in there and make it a lighter shade of that blue and purple. Okay, so we're going to switch over to our large blending brush now. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and pick up some titanium white. I'm going to start painting over top of part of that purple and blue to pick up some of that color and start blending it into that white. And then back into the middle, I'll pick up a little bit more white. Softly blending and then a little bit more white again for the lightest part of the sky. So you may need to work at this quite a bit to get that nice soft look. You can use a tiny bit of water if you really need it. Okay, so we're going to use our filbert brush now. No water. Pull into both of those colors again, the phthalo blue and the purple. And we're going to pull a line right across. And then I'm going to bring it down a little bit lower and curve it down towards the left. That's where our cabin's going to be. And then I'm going to pull and flick up 
soft little brush strokes to create a little forest back here. So I'm turning my brush both ways. I'll turn it to make skinny uh, tree trunks and then I'll turn it the other way to pull up and make a bunch of those feather like looking trees back there. So I'm going to tap lightly and keep moving my brush down that tree trunk to create all those branches making the top smaller than the rest and these trees are just going to get slightly bigger at the bottom and we're going to do the same thing in the water it's going to be a mirrored reflection so we're going to paint everything above right down in the water below now you can turn your canvas upside down uh, it would be easier this way but just for filming purposes I painted it like this so let's keep adding more trees just pulling those lines right through across that line there so we've got that instant reflection in the water and then turning my brush over to paint all those little branches and so on and so forth we'll keep doing this with all of the trees now those ones are further away, so they're going to be a little bit lighter in color. Okay, now I'm going to go over this area right here and add more of the purple and the blue. We need a good base right here so that we can have our little house right there and look like it's not, we don't want it to look like it's floating in the water. Um, so we need some ground, some land there, and I'll just go over a few more of these trees here. This one just a little bit taller that helps to bring it more to the foreground and create a little bit more perspective so you want to have a variation of height in your trees okay just adding a little bit more of that blue and purple again for more contrast back here Okay, now I'm going to begin a mountain, so I'm just lightly wiggling, dabbing and pulling, no water on my brush, again using this filbert, just with that phthalo blue and the purple, and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing below in the water for the reflection. Just going to pull down a few more lines and then again follow through with the reflection in the water. Now you don't have to get it exactly precise, it's just a painting as long as you have uh, the same amount of lines, pretty much same color, same direction, that's all you need. You don't have to do everything exactly the same. Now I'm going to take some white and some of my neon orange. I'm going to take both those colors and I'm going to mix them together to create a very light fuzzy peachy color. You want to make sure you have the majority of the paint on the very end of your brush and start tapping very lightly wherever you want to add that snow. Now I chose uh, this light peachy color because it's complementary to all the purples that we've got going on in this painting. Okay, and now we're going to add the snow in the reflection. And as you can see, it doesn't matter which um, 
set of trees you do first. You can do the reflection ones first. You can do the ones on the top first. I'm just kind of dragging down, barely touching that canvas, just to give it a slight blurred uh, look to it because it is water. And then on this tree, I decided to add more paint. Not every tree uh, is gonna have the same amount of highlights and snow on them. They're all gonna be different. So keep that in mind. You don't have to put the same amount of snow on every single thing in your painting. Okay, let's start adding some snow to this little guy back here. Part of these trees at the base of them, at the bottom of them, are going to be hidden anyways from the log house or the cabin where that we're going to be adding pretty soon. But it's nice to just paint them all first. And then these ones back here are just going to have way more snow to them and be lighter in color. Okay, I'm going to carefully apply a little bit of that peach highlight to the mountains and then a little bit in the sky. So I'm just pulling very lightly for some clouds, just sweeping across the sky and then a little bit right down by the mountains as well. And I'm going to soften this one up and kind of pull on an angle. Make it look like it's kind of sweeping up diagonally towards that top right corner. Okay, I'm going to follow along below in that reflection. I'm just eyeballing it, lining it up wherever I see it on the top. I'm going to line it up right down below and carry through with that same color. So I'm just going to continue adding the highlights to this reflection in the water. And then we'll be adding some more to the clouds as it dries, I'm able to see how much more of a highlight I need to add to them. And I'm going to finish up the trees on the left, down in the water, and then we'll start working on our little uh, cabin in the woods. So as I mentioned in my last video, I'm wrapping up my winter Christmas paintings um, this month. It's December right now. And I'm starting to do a little bit more of my fantasy pieces until I transition into my florals for the month of January. So next week you might see um, one of my fantasy pieces. I've got something in mind that I really want to paint. I did a smaller version of it already and if you want to see that you can go over to my Facebook page Joni Young Art and um, that'll give you an idea of what I've got in store uh, for my next um, video that I'm going to be doing. So it's going to be something along that lines, um, but much larger. 
the one that I just finished up is only a 9 by 12 and there's a lot of detail in it for a 9 by 12 um, so it's going to be a whole lot easier to paint something similar to that on a much larger canvas so I'm really really looking forward to doing that um, but right now let's get back to this painting adding some more clouds reflection in the water and I'm pulling some purple a little bit of blue right back there on the land just making sure I have the right amount of contrast to make everything stand out nicely now I've got my filbert again and I've just added a little bit of blue and white and I'm flicking short little flicks up and down for some trees way back here that's so far away that they're just really little and you can barely see them going to add a little bit right back here too and it's okay if you accidentally put too much in and you're not really happy with it you can always paint over acrylic paint is very forgiving okay so let's start adding some more snow to these trees here and again I'm using that neon orange with white and as I said earlier you can use any orange you have if you don't have this one I just really love my neon paints and you guys know that by now if you've been following me for the past year and watching all my videos I talk about them all the time I just love bright colors and they make me happy so prior to painting this I wasn't sure exactly where I was gonna go with this I kind of was led by color I picked a few colors that I knew would look nice together and that I wanted to work with uh, I knew it I knew I wanted it to be uh, winter painting um, but it wasn't until I added that cabin that I knew I was going to. It just kind of started taking a shape of its own. And um, so I'm glad that I just kind of left this area over here on the left side and added those mountains on the right side because I really like how the composition ended up coming together. So I'm going to finish these trees up. Now just down here I accidentally... Um, made a little bit of a mistake I pulled that brush over a little bit too far and made the tree look like it's kind of leaning and so I have to uh, go with that on the top as well rather than try to wipe it off I thought I would just kind of make the tree on the top look like it's leaning and I really like the way that looks so like Bob Ross would say there's no mistakes just happy little accidents and it's so true some of the fav some of my favorite things about my paintings are uh, the little things that um, kind of went off track or went wrong, they ended up being my favorite things. So don't worry, don't stress if you make a mistake in your painting. Just go with it. Make it work. That's kind of the way life works too. Things don't always go as planned, but you just make it work out. And sometimes it's better than you wanted it to be or had expected it to be. Okay, so let's finish these up and get started on that cabin. Before I do that, I'm just going to add a little bit of that light purple violet right in here. There's a little bit of white on my brush mixed with that. And a little bit of phthalo blue and white. I want to have just a little skiff of snow right here above and below so it's reflecting. And let's just smooth that out. Okay, 
Okay, so I seem to have lost that contrast. I added a bit too much light in there and I'm going back in now with a clean brush and phthalo blue. Maybe a little bit of purple mixed with it. Doesn't matter as long as it looks nice and dark. I'm going to pull it around to the bottom of those mountains as well. And I'm going to add, with my filter brush, light purple violet. I'm adding it right in between that blue and the peach. That's actually a lot brighter in real life than what the camera is showing you right now. Okay, I've got a clean brush. I'm going to take some of my orange, some white, and I'm going to start working on the glow behind the cabin. So the warm light that's coming from inside the cabin is going to be reflecting um, outside of those windows on these trees. So I just kind of want to warm up the snow on them with this peachy color. Then, of course, I'm going down in the reflection and continuing it down below. I'm taking some neon yellow now. I'm going to mix that with some titanium white. And I'm painting the light from where all the windows are going to be first. And then I'm going to come around with the rest of the house. So just little dabs for windows. And don't forget about your reflection. And it's best to do it right away. As soon as you do something above, do it right down below. That way you won't forget about it. And I'm going to dab a little bit of this light yellow on some of the snowy trees. Okay, now that I've got that nice warm glow on those trees, I'm going to carry that through over to the highlight on the mountains. I'm going to incorporate some of that light, buttery yellow. And again, I'm just using my filbert for this. You can use a liner brush if you like. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more peach and light yellow and add a bit more color to the clouds. Just nice little soft sweeps, not pushing too hard. And I don't have any water on my brush at this point either. Let's pick up some more of that purple, a little bit of orange. So mixing those two colors together will create a nice warm brown tone that we need for our, our little house here. So I'm going to do a little triangle pointy roof, peak on the roof, and then come in around windows and I wasn't sure at this point you can see I did a few different peaks there I was going to go for more of a fancy house and then I decided not to I wanted to keep it just a traditional cozy little cabin so I'm going to straighten that roof out and just have the one main peak on it on the front and then um, on the end of it but you can't really see that one 
I'm gonna add a shadow in here. So I just picked up a little bit of phthalo blue so I can add a nice shadow. And then I'll just cut across right above those windows. And I picked up some white and it's got a little bit of that phthalo blue with it. So this will just be a nice base to build up to our, our bright snowy highlight on there. Okay, let's line it up and the reflection and follow through and do the same thing. Remember, you don't have to do it exactly the same, but just try your best to make it somewhat uh, look, the, look the same and similar. And let's pull down those lines. I'm just using phthalo blue for this dark shadow. And then I'll come in with my orange and purple that I used to make a brown. And you can just use any brown you have. I have these two colors out on my palette already, so I know that by mixing them I'll get the color that I'd like. Okay, really liking how this is looking. It's time to add our bright snowy highlight to the roof and we're going to do both edges of this peak and then come in and I've got quite a bit of paint on the end of my brush. I'm barely touching and just tapping lightly, dabbing on that paint so it stays there and it looks nice and thick and it will almost kind of have a 3D look. And I'm going to follow through with the bottom continue to paint in this reflection. It's really fun working on a painting that has mirrored reflections in the water like this. And it looks so cool after. It's just really uh, kind of satisfying to create and see it all done at the end. Let's soften this up a little bit. Just tapping a little bit of white and yellow in those windows and then right on the snow outside of those windows where you would be able to see that light shining down on. Oh, picked up a little bit of blue. Paint's not quite dry underneath so I'm just going to dab over that. Okay, we're going to switch over to our liner brush. Don't forget to wash all your brushes out in between. I'm skipping that part of the video for you guys because it would take too long. But you definitely don't want to leave your brushes sitting in water or sitting in paint. So with the liner brush, I'm going to start adding a little bit more detail here. And just maybe some little lines in here. Maybe it's a, a log cabin or timber frame home and it's got some neat kind of beams and structures and architecture. So I don't know, just use your imagination and add little beams and lines wherever. And I'm going to pull through a little bit of that peach for some more of a highlight. And while I've got that on my little liner, I'm going to hop over to these mountains and pull a little bit of details through here. Just some more lines and wiggles. 
and a little bit more on the cloud oh that looks really pretty so I've got um, yellow neon yellow neon orange and titanium white that I've mixed up always the ratio is always going to be more white uh, to the than the color that you're using to achieve this nice bright highlight because remember that acrylic paint is always going to dry darker Okay, I'm really happy with this so far. I think I want to do some more detail on the house. I'm definitely going to be adding a chimney. And I also want to add um, some lines on the windows. I like a grid on the windows. Putting a nice shadow. And then two little lines and three two lines down and three lines across and then the same thing try to do the same thing in the reflection and this is such a small canvas that I'm working on it's only 9 by 12 um, so it's it makes it even harder to be able to paint all these little details in here and I've got a really really small liner brush that I'm using but it's still uh, quite difficult so you need to have a really steady hand and some practice I, I wouldn't really recommend this for beginners not the house anyways the rest of it is totally beginner friendly so a few little lines on these little windows as well Dabbing a little bit of water down Salo here just to see if I want to add a little bit more color. That blue over top of the yellow will make a sort of a turquoisey green color. And at this point, I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep that. I just wanted to try it out and see if I liked it. Okay, so now I'm adding a little bit of water down uh, light purple violet. And I mentioned earlier, if you don't have this um, neon light purple violet, you can use quinacridone violet, you can use magenta, um, or you could take dioxazine purple and um, even a cardinal crimson red. You can mix those two and get a really nice violety purple color. So there's a lot of variations and choices for you guys. Don't ever think that you can't do one of my tutorials if you don't have every single brush I have, every single brand of paint, um, shade of paint that I'm working with. Okay, I'm adding some more snow to the roof here to make it really stand out. And it's time for the chimney now. I think I'm going to just do a, yeah, a little line there, straight up and down, and then a little flick off to the side so it looks like there's a shadow. And I'm going to go down in the reflection and do that right away so I don't forget about it. And now with a clean brush, I'm taking white, a little bit of water, and I'm just going to pull and wiggle and flick out. And then I use my finger to soften it up to make it look like it's really just disappearing into that sky. And then I'll try my best to do something sort of similar that I, to that in the reflection below.
all day after working at that smoke from the chimney for a while I think I'm happy with the way it looks and I'm going to switch over to my purple violet again and I'm going to scumble in and pull some of that color through the bottom and the top part of the sky I'm even going to go and bring it down to that peachy color I just want a little bit more I want to break up all the blue I feel like there's too much blue and I really wanted to have that nice pop of purple violet in this oh and I just noticed realized I have a couple of trees here that I almost forgot about so I'm gonna quickly get these ones done and while I'm doing this I also want to give a shout out to Tiffany who helped me name my last uh, painting of the snow globe um, thank you Tiffany on my Facebook art page Joni Young Art so she came up with an awesome title snow place like home and it's for that new snow globe painting that I was talking about earlier and that I'm gonna leave a link below for you guys in the description But yeah, so after I finish up this little bit of snow up here, I am going to be adding some more of that purple violet to the sky and a little bit over part of that peachy cloud and then in the water. Because I just really wanted to have more of that pop of color in this painting and break up from just all that blue. And don't get me wrong, I really like blue. Like phthalo blue is my fa probably my favorite shade of blue. But I don't like it alone. I like mixing it with different colors. And uh, I usually use a lot more colors than this in my paintings. Today I'm really um, narrowing it down to just a few, which is hard for me. Um, but I really like all these colors together. That purple is just such a warm uh, yet vivid purple. And it looks so nice with a peach. And of course blue and purple look really really gorgeous together I want to thank you guys uh, so much for tuning into my channel and my videos each and every week um, for your support you guys uh, give so much support to my channel and it really doesn't go unnoticed I appreciate each and every one of you guys um, thanks so much for all your comments and kind words and likes on my last video um, and if you guys haven't seen it yet I painted a magical snow globe um, outside in the snow uh, it's a really pretty one I've always wanted to paint a snow globe so I finally did it and it's one of my longest tutorials so if you guys are really serious about learning how to paint it I didn't leave anything out I mean I really haven't been leaving anything out lately in my videos I've been making them longer for you guys um, so I'll leave a link below to my playlist for all of my winter paintings and tutorials as well as some other playlists of mine and that way you guys could just go and click on it and it will take you directly to there and you can look through and and uh, see if anything else catches your eye that you may want to watch me paint or learn to paint for yourself Okay, so here I am pulling in my favorite color. And you can see it just livens up the painting so much more. It's such a brilliant color, so vivid and pretty. And I wanted to see if I would like it overlapped with part of that orange. And I'm kind of not really sure at this point. I think it might be a little bit too, too bright and uh, so I'm kind of just going to scumble a little bit of that off, blend it out. But I'm not going to take all of it off because I really do like that. It really makes you feel like it's that time of the day when the sun is going down and you're going to sit by the fire and um put on a good movie and and start dinner it kind of just sets a mood you know with what time of day it is in your painting 
So that's important to think about when you're creating a piece. But like I said earlier with this one, I didn't know what time of day I wanted my painting to be in. I just kind of had, uh, it's kind of like writer's block. I get, us artists get painter's block and we don't always know what we're going to paint next. And, uh, or sometimes we have something in mind, but then we're like, mm, I just really don't want to paint that right now. I've changed my mind for some reason. So quite often what I do is I, I love color so much that I'll just, if I don't know what I want to paint, I'll look through all my paints and pick out the colors that are kind of really calling to me and then I start laying them out on my palette and kind of just goes from there. This painting is just about all done and I'm using my liner brush titanium white and just creating a little simple crescent moon and a few dabs for stars. And this painting is all finished. I want to thank you guys so much again for watching. Um, don't forget to like this video leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day and I wish you guys happy painting and I'll see you next time.